Thank you for staying with our coverage of the 2023 Ontario Doubles Crokinaw Championship and we are down to the semi-final stage as Raymond and Jason Beerling are taking on Josh Carafello and Ron Langell. It's a very exciting match here as the two winners of the Owen Sound Doubles Tournament just a month ago take on the eight-time World Doubles Champions and this promises to be an exciting match. Ray Beerling gets us started the right way and Josh Carafello is able to answer. That's three straight 20s to start here, and at a blistering pace as well, Langell is the first to miss. So an opportunity for the Beerlings to build an early advantage. Very nice shot from Ray there, as he scores that good takeout 20. Carafalo answers though. And Jason Beerling comes up short, leaving almost the exact same shot for Ron Langell that he left for Ray Beerling, but Langell can't convert it. Ray Beerling sticks nicely to the outside here. Carafello from this line may even be looking at an assist. Oh, he pushes it through for the follow through, but leaves a hanger 20, which Jason converts. Ron Langell converts that. 4 3 in the 20s, halfway through the round, and now 5 3. Carafello comes up short, so this round swinging even further toward the Beerlings especially if Jason can convert this shot. And from this line, this looks like a defensive play, and it is. Langell's going to have to bring this one back off a post if he wants anything here. Couple of good peg bounces there, but, uh, but no 20 scored. Ray Beerling sizing this up, plays a, a good old defensive follow-through there, just pushing away from Carafello with the follow-through. And again, very little left here. Carafello didn't want to see that one roll out of the 15 circle, and that is a great controlled roll, just about four inches from Jason Beerling, severely limiting the options that Langell has with this shot. Langell tried to carve it in, but it went through. And that beautiful roll from Ray Beerling all but secures it. Good effort from Carafello to get back in, but this is all stitched up. As even with that miss there, it is impossible. There are two 20s down with only one shot to go. And uh, Raymond and Jason Beerling have stolen the first two points of this race to nine semifinal. Now Carafello to start the Ontario singles champion and probably the, uh, the sort of breakout player of the year here, Carafello. His, his open 20 shot just bounces out of the hole. Jason Beerling won't like that result as he gives up a takeout 20 chance to Langell, but that must have stayed on. No, it doesn't. Just barely got the takeout 20, did Langell. And now Ray Beerling called on to tie it up, but he can't get it. At least a touch 20 chance here for Carafello. Sliding over to the right, looking for looking for just a touch. Almost gets the takeout with it. Nicely done there by Caravello. Jason Beerling scores to at least keep the pressure on. This one in a spot where no offense can come for Ray Beerling. Gets the takeout through the pegs. Caravello, a hidden stick might be good enough here. Will not leave anything easy. For Jason Beerling. He should be able to carve this back into the 15 though. Digs it out, sends it past the 20 hole on two attempts, leaves a hanger, which Langell converts. Beerling misses it wide. So Carafello can stick easily in front of the 20 hole and leave very little. Jason Beerling pushing for it all there, missed it wide. Langell wouldn't, uh, wouldn't want that little roll, but he got it. An angle in chance for Ray Beerling here. Oh, almost had it coming and going. Again, a hanger chance left for Carafello and handled. Four 20s to one for Carafello and Langell. They are in a sterling position. Jason Beerling gets that open 20 to go. So they're not out of it yet. 
although that guarantees at least one point for Carafello and Langell. They are up 320s with three Beerling shots to come. And that one bounces out for Ray Beerling. This round, as it comes down to its last shots, is out of reach with that takeout made. These last three shots are just for pride. Jason Beerling chooses to take it just as practice and scores the open 20. That one counts from Ron Langell. And that last shot buzzes around. Langell and Carafello t steal the two points right back. Off of a couple of really nice uh, touch 20 shots around the hole. Very well played from the two of them. Jason Beerling kicks off round three with the open 20. And Langell is right there to respond. The Beerling brothers, obviously both elite 20 shooters. Ray Beerling is, has won several uh, 20s titles at the World Grokono Championship. Jason Beerling uh, never took home that crown to my knowledge, but he has been, he's always right at, uh, toward the top of the 20s standings. The first miss of the round coming from Carafello and Langell, and that is a gorgeous roll away from Ray Beerling. Catches that peg and bounces back towards him. That's a perfect shot in singles and a perfect shot in doubles. Carafello happy to hit and stick. Jason may be looking for a roll of his own. Just chose to, uh, to stick right there. Leaves Langell an opportunity to bring it in, but probably not to get a 20 with it, and that is all okay. That drifts in further than Ray Beerling wanted it to. Chance for Carafello. This is precise. Gets the 20, but no takeout. So a chance for Jason Beerling here to restore the advantage, which he gets. 4-3 to the Beerlings. This is still 20-able here for Langell, but he hits it too square. Ray Beerling will probably look to roll away here, although he's going to take it from the right. Jason def uh, said there, it seems the safest. It is certainly the safest way to get the takeout, but you worry about where your shooter will wind up. There's every opportunity to leave a 20 chance for your opponent, and that's a good position. Carafello seeing a follow-through chance, perhaps, and he did. He went for it. That damaging disc almost came back and made a mess of something, but a follow-through, excuse me, a hanger 20 chance for Jason now. Oh, it wobbled! It just wobbled but wouldn't drop. The Beerling's still two 20s ahead now. As Langell fails to convert that follow-through 20, Ray Beerling very happy to just hit and stick. There could be a shot here for Carafello to come off of that peg to the right of this disc and potentially even score a 20. It is very precise. Kind of needs to make it though. Carafello lining it up and just missing it. So for, Ray, uh, for Jason Beerling, this is just a stick to the outside to guarantee the two points. Typically, a player would worry about sticking to the other side, or sticking to their side, and allowing uh, allowing the next player to play a hide on their partner. I don't think they needed to here, and maybe half a chance now as that disc rolls into the 15. Carafello just says get it out and stay in the 15, but that's not enough. And with that disc not scoring a 20, the round is over. And that's a pretty good hide as well. I'm not entirely sure what all the uh, all the trouble is over here, but, uh, but Carafello is going to put some effort into this one. really don't see this here. Oh my word, what a great try. Just bounces straight out of the hole. Although at the end of it, certainly the two points go to the Beerlings. Three straight steals to start off the match. And just some really good defensive positioning from Ray Beerling in that round. Now, Ron Langell will happily start out round four with an open 20. And Ray Beerling will easily level. Carafello. 
keeps it to two to one. And we're four straight around the board. As I mentioned, Carafello and Langel are the reigning Owen Sound doubles champions. They're the, uh, this was the first year in which competitive doubles was played at Owen Sound, but, uh, but they came away with a really excellent victory. And through four shots each, we have four 20s each. Uh, Carafello and Langel beat the one-time partnership of Ray Beerling and Connor Reinman in the semifinals and then defeated upstart finalists Oliver and Philip Ware to claim the title. The first miss came from Ray Beerling, but no 20 scored off of it. Langel, though, converts that miss from Jason Beerling to lead six 20s to four. The Beerlings with hammer are down a 20. Good composure there from Carafello. And Jason Beerling misses it wide. Great chance for Langel and Carafello to steal right back, and that is a perfect rollout. That is absolutely gorgeous. Ray Beerling just chooses to peel rather than roll over. And that shot from Carafello guarantees a point. They are up to eight 20s in the cup. Jason Beerling keeps his team alive. But that one stitches it up. Nine twenties for Carafel and Langel, a chance to make it 10. Not quite. The rare double digit 20 score not achieved here. Nine twenties to seven in the round. And that was on the back of a few excellent shots from Ron Langel. We're seeing that player spotlight here. He even not shown in that replay, but equally deserving was that rollout that he made into the five in front of Carafello. That was a beautiful shot. But now tied at four points apiece and a 20 each to start off the round. We've seen some really excellent 20 scoring from these two teams so far. And we're around the board perfect again. Ray Beerling the first to miss as he comes up short. Carafello sliding over to his right to try and make this takeout 20, which he gets. Well struck there. Jason Beerling levels it. But the extra shot here with the hammer going to Carafello and Langel as Ronnie cleans that one up. Again, the 20 rhythm for both of these teams is just extraordinary. As Jason sends that long, the commentator, commentator's curse allows Langel and Carafello to build a 220 advantage. Ray Beerling missing. So I really have cursed this. Carafello off to his right to try and make the takeout 20. Again, he gets it. 720s to 4, a 320 lead with hammer. This is already a very comfortable position, and they're up to 8 again. With 4 shots to go, that's a heavy hanger. Carafello certainly does not need this, but I have a feeling he'll go for it. Just missed. Good effort there. Beerling. Needing this one to stay alive, he won't get it. Ron Langel can put this round to sleep right here. I'm sure he would have loved personally to score the 20, but just happy to make the takeout and guarantee the two points. Beerling acknowledging that, uh, that this round is pretty well cooked. And a really excellent roll away as well there, but last shots each, Jason makes a good one for pride. And Langel fires that last shot just wide. Some really good takeout 20s from the Langel and Carafello team. And they take a 6-4 advantage as the hammer holds for two points for the first time in this match. Now the Beerlings will look to return the favor, but Josh Carafello has other ideas. He scores the opening 20. Jason Beerling comes up short. So a big early opportunity for Langel and Carafello. That one just missed wide. Not easy leave here. Beerling looking for that sort of short follow through. Gets it off a peg. What a shot from Ray Beerling. I'm sure it's not how he drew it up, but he'll happily take it. Carafello unfazed drains the open 20. Jason Beerling gets back on track. A good one from Langel. Ray Beerling this time comes up short. This is a much easier chance for Carafello, but he can't convert it. 
So Jason Beerling eyeing up the shot up the line, but chooses to just go for, uh, chooses to make sure of the takeout, go for the 20 as well. Angel could roll a bit to his right, doesn't, and leaves this tricky. I think there is a shot here which Ray Beerling is eyeing up to just catch a flick off of that natural disc and score the 20. Oh, it just doesn't go so close to that, but it wouldn't work for the Beerlings. Carafello now with a, an apparently confusing uh, shot. Fellow now deciding to go up the line. I'm still not sure exactly what he's going for. Gets a very nice double. Uh, he's unlucky with that leave, as I think Jason Beerling will be able to keep this to the outside, not leave a shot to disturb that white disc. He may be able to preserve the hanger chance for Ray. And I think that will do it. There is no real shot to move that white disc hanging over the hole, so... Langell just takes the single takeout through the pegs, and Ray Beerling with a 20 chance, which he makes. 3-3 in the cup. Carafello can restore the advantage with a 20 here, but it doesn't go. That was a critical shot there. The Beerlings have the hammer. There are two Carafello and Langell discs on the board, but there is a, there's a wide open 20 chance, which Jason seems happy to leave for Ray. Angel makes that takeout easily. He's saying that now Ray has to go after that disc hanging over the 20 hole. Just five shots left in the round. Three for the Beerlings and two for Carafello and Langel. this up. Gets the 20. Great shot there. They go up one with the hammer. Last shots each now. This, even if Carafello scores the 20, this is a bad situation for them. Langel just pointing that out clearly that there's, there's no way to just promote, to bring both the shooter and the disc in play into the 15, which they would need. Carafello, I think, is finding the strategy here. He's gonna, he's suggesting to ricochet off their own and hope for an open 20 miss from Jason. This is, I think, the only way that they get a winning chance in the round. It's, it's unorthodox, but I think it's the only way. Fellow now lining up this ricochet off his own disc and gets it. What a shot from Carafello. The creativity to see it. That is a valid shot. He asks the question. But Jason Beerling can eliminate that advantage right here with an open 20 and he gets it. Guaranteed a point now. Langell scores to make Ray Beerling shoot and he scores the open 20 to win it. What a fascinating conclusion to this round. Ray Beerling scored that, that bonus 20, but this one was definitely on purpose. That was a great shot. And I think the shot of the round there, at least the, the, uh, the creativity in Carafello's final shot, deserves a round of applause. Langell going for the follow-through 20 wouldn't go. Now Ray has to go for a tougher one of his own, which he makes. At 6-6, six, six, this is a pivotal round, and Ray Beerling gets them back on serve. Jason comes up short again, and this is an easier chance for Langell from this line. He's looking for just the 20, and that's what he got. Ray Beerling is there to level the 20 count. Carafello and Langell with the advantage of the hammer. Jason. 
Looking to drive through and scores a, a marvelous long follow through 20. They're also right back on serve. Tied at three in the 20s and Ray sends it long. Definitely a 20 chance here for Carafello if he wants it. A couple of really good two follow through 20s on the round for the Beerlings. And that one just drops for Carafello. He's the, the smirking reaction there, the grimacing reaction. He, he hit that with quite a lot of pace. That was a good catch by the 20 hole. And now Carafello and Langel have seeing a, uh, a pretty big lead develop here, especially if Carafello can score this 20, which he does. They're up two 20s with the hammer. A lot of these rounds have been uh, kind of runaways. Substantial advantages taken into the last shots. Ray Beerling at least keeping the pressure on. It's 7-6 to Carafello and Langel, now 8-6. Another huge 20 scoring round for the Owen Sound champions. As they have a chance to go for 10. Ray Beerling just misses. That's going to make this complicated. Josh Carafello knows that this is an, an irrelevant shot, an inconsequential opportunity, but I think he wanted the double digits as much as the rest of us. Just good shooting all around. Two huge follow-through 20s. Not enough for the Beerlings. That was a lovely ricochet 20 from Carafello. Now, Carafello and Langell are just a point away from a spot in their second consecutive tournament finals as a team. Ray Beerling will need to answer Langell's opening effort, which he does. Carafello keeps it going for 2-1. And now, for at least the third time in this match, we're through the first four shots perfect, but Langell is the first to miss. Ray Beerling scores a quality takeout 20 there. Carafello, level to the task, and Jason Beerling converts for 4-3. Oh, the miss comes from Ray Beerling, though. Gives a chance to get back on serve for Carafello. Not taken. That just seemed to stop on him right there in front of the hole. Jason Beerling gets it to go. The 20 lead restored for the Beerlings with Hammer. Langel right there though. Ray Beerling misses that one wide. It drifts well long of the hole. I'm not sure there's an easy opportunity here. Certainly not to get both takeout and 20 for Carafello. Langel giving advice that seems very appropriate here. If you like the touch 20, go for it. If not, just make sure the takeout. And I'm not sure Carafello really likes the touch 20, but he's going for it and loses his shooter on the shot. A chance for Jason Beerling to restore his team's 20 lead, which he gets. No reason to play too hasty here, but Langel peels. Beerling, Ray Beerling, knocks another one in. They are up two 20s with the hammer. Carafello cuts it back to one. But Jason Beerling locks that in. They're guaranteed a point. At worst, they will have an open shot for the two points with their last. But Ray Beerling knocks that one down for 920 round of their own. Carafello keeps it up for 820s again. The 20 scoring in this match has truly been fantastic. But nobody, nobody can quite get to that double digit mark. They don't need it. We are headed to yet another deciding round in this Ontario Doubles Championship. And in this deciding round, Carafello and Langel will have the hammer. Ray Beerling gets us started with an open 20. And Carafello is right there. That one bounces out of the hole for Jason as he looks skyward. Ron Langell a chance to play defense. He gets that pretty nicely. Maybe a bounce back 20 available for Beerling. As he's eyeing this one up. And they might need it already at this stage. If you're not getting the takeout, you need to be sure of the 20, and that doesn't go. The 
advantage seems to be piling up early for Carafello and Langel. Although this is a little bit awkward. I think the best play here would be to, to make the takeout and roll a bit toward the camera here. Just uh, make certain you're leaving no double, and I don't think you would be leaving a double. From this line, looks like Carafello's going for something more aggressive, and he was. Now, I'm really not sure what he's left here for Jason Beerling. Does the double takeout go? He says he hates the, uh, the touch 20 up the line, which I think is right. I think I hate it too. Jason Beerling seeing perhaps the double, gets it, and nearly gets the 20 as well. That was a huge shot. Now we're back to playing just the one disc on the board. Angel gunning for the 20, but loses his shooter on the rebound. This is a huge moment. Jason Beerling saying we need the 20 at all expense. Gets the 20 and leaves the disc in play in a really nice spot. Carafello needs to work to bring this in. Great shot. Almost got the perfect peg bounce as well. Jason Beerling rolls that out beautifully. So uh, nothing to work with here for Langel. He makes that solid uh, hit and stick. Ray Beerling trying to decide exactly what to do. I think the conventional logic says to, uh, to make the takeout and roll between those two pegs facing Carafello, just as Ray set it up there. Uh, that's not how he drew it up, but it's not bad. Definitely a 20 opportunity, but it needs to be forced a little bit. This tense, deciding round. Carafello and Langel again have the hammer, but they trail by a 20. Oh, what a shot off of a couple of pegs from Carafello. Jason Beerling with an opportunity to roll away from Langel again, but he doesn't get it. This is a hangar 20 opportunity. Could level the round, but it doesn't go. Just missed the line, did Langel. And now a chance again for Ray Beerling, but he goes for the follow through 20 and it lips out. Exciting shots, narrowly missing. Chance for Carafello to tie it all up, and that doesn't go. My goodness. Jason Beerling now eyeing up the takeout 20, which would give his team a huge advantage. This is an enormous shot here and he nails it. Perfectly taken by Jason Beerling. They're up two 20s. Ron Langel cuts it to one. But this, an open 20 here for Ray Beerling would guarantee them a point in the round and at least to say that they would not lose here. That one bounces out. It's a little awkward though. Carafello sizing it up, up the right, uh, the left hand line. That's certainly the easiest way to score the 20, but they really need it with the takeout. Certainly up the line at the left is the easiest way to get the 20. Down the middle is the easiest way to get the takeout. But both of them make the other one very difficult. And this is a huge moment in the match. If Carafello can make this, they are back on level footing with a shot left for each team. Just one shot left for each team. If he does not make this, it is it leaves the Beerlings in a stellar position. Going for it now is Carafello. He loses everything, clears the board, and Jason Beerling, all he has to do is not leave a takeout 20 chance. And he's going to go up the left-hand line to avoid leaving a hangar. He sent it well long, and that is a fortunate leave. Once again, Ron Langel called on now to make a very difficult shot. And he goes for it, doesn't get it. So after a tense final round, Ray and Jason Beerling steal the final two points and advance by a 10-8 margin to the Ontario Doubles Crokinole Championship Final. Let's enjoy these highlights from the last round. A couple of big shots from Jason Beerling as they book their spot in the final another time.